हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक वी आर डूइंग आर चैप्टर नंबर थर्ड एनिमल लाइफ सो इन दर प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड हाउ एनिमल्स लिव सो आर फर्स्ट टॉपिक वॉज दैट हाउ एनिमल्स ब्रीथ सो ब्रीथिंग इन एनिमल्स वी हैव कवर्ड एंड विच ऑर्गन्स आर एंगेज इन दैट वी हैव कवर्ड ऑल दैट ऑल्सो सो आर नेक्स्ट स्टेप विच इज यूज फॉर सर्वाइवल विच इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट और नेसेसरी फॉर सर्वाइवल इज हाउ एनिमल ईट so how animal eat and what they eat on that basis we have covered our topic carnivore and herbivore so we have divided them all along so now our next topic what we are going to do is our third importance which is that it is movement in animals how animals move because as you know like us if you want something if you uh, want to eat something you have to get it you have to procure it so how you could do it you you can do it by any of your body part like we use almost hands to take our food so similarly animals also uh, need some organs or need some body parts which are used for many tasks for example animals use them for first is to procure their food to get get their food if they want their food they have to use their any organ or any of their body part to take it as usual we know so our second point is to move from one place to another so as you know if any body part is engaged in motion as you know movements is the main topic so first is for procure their food they use motion for procuring their food and second is to move from one place to another as you know if we want to go from one place to another we use their our we use our legs as you know so to move from one to another place animals also want a movement body part so third point is to protect themselves from enemies as you know when you are engaged in a fight you have to protect yourself you have to defend yourself for that you want any of your body parts like you use hands and legs for protecting yourself similarly animals also require any of their moving body part to protect themselves from their enemies so a fourth major point is to building their homes as we also we are comparing animals to ourselves because it is easier much easier to learn how we do and how animals do so like we use our hands for building our homes as you know similarly animals also use their hands or any you can say any body part for example every animal use their different body part for motion for movement and for several things so like we are considering a example of bird bird use their beaks bird use their beaks for collecting building material and many other animals use their many other body parts so now the main four points was we have discussed is they are the mo uh, body parts or which used in motion have several advantages for example for first for procuring their food to get their food second is to move from one place to another they use their body part third is to protect themselves from their enemies and fourth and last is for building their homes as you know these are the multitasking body parts which are used for several purposes so now we are going to consider now which animal use which body part or which organ to move here and there so like we are considering the fish for first example we are considering a fish so fish have unpaired and paired fins fins you can know here it is given to you that these these structures are called fins so they have two paired fins like two paired fins and two unpaired like unpaired use for balancing their motion and for paired paired use to let them move forward as you know in water if a fish wants a motion the paired fins will allow a fish to move the in the forward direction and unpaired will help them to maintain the balance so that their motion can't be inclined so now the third point which is a major point in fish which is tail fin tail fin as you know here it is so tail fin is used is a very uh, strong body part you can say which is used to change the direction in the 
water. So we have considered fish. In the fish, we have unpaired and paired fins and one tail fin, which is a major powerful body part. Paired fins move, help to move forward and unpaired helps to maintain balance and tail fin maintains the direction. So where the fish wants to go is maintained by tail fin. So now our next, uh, for our next animal, which are frogs, everyone know, frogs have webbed toes. As you can see, whenever you have a look at the frog, you can see there is a network-like structure that are called web you know, web, which helps them to float, to help them to swim and to move forward even on water and even on land. So now we have considered web toes to swim for frogs. Now our next, which we, we have many of their species in the water. So next species for the water is turtles and tortoise. So what they use, they use the forelimbs, forelimbs like in human beings you can use that four limbs are these. So in uh, turtles and tortoise, they use four limbs to move forward as they are feet shaped. As you know feet shaped, it was slight like that, not according to human feet, but this is called the feet shape. Uh, feet shape. So tortoise and turtles use four limbs which are feet shaped, use them to move forward to swim in the water. And now we are considering the last which is penguins. How penguins work? So penguins to for swimming they use their forelimbs. Here is a structure, here is the diagram I have shown to you. What are the flippers? Flippers are these structures. They use them to float. They use them to float, they use them to swim. So these are called the forelimbs, forelimbs and flippers you can say. So we, uh, what they help to them? They help them to swim and to walk. Not in the, on the ground, but in the water. So for, as you can see, uh, penguins can move on the land also. So uh, what they use on the land? They use their small feet, which are very small. We can say them hind feet for the motion on the ground. And when they are moving on the ground, they use them for the jump to move in the water or to jump in the water. So now we are going to discuss next. So our next uh, points are insects. So we are considering our insects. So first we are going to consider the similar type of insects which are like cockroaches, ants. As you know, everyone have seen cockroaches and most of you are feared of it. <laughs> So first we are considering cockroach. So as you can see, there are six legs. We can say six limbs for motion and for crawling. So like cockroach ant also have six legs for their motion and for their other multiple things which we have discussed earlier. So next, which are, uh, there are some more kinds of uh, insects which are different from that. For example, considering a grasshopper. Everyone has seen grasshopper. So it seems like that. Am I correct? Okay. So grasshopper seems like that. And it has long hind legs. Actually, these are the hind legs which are very long. You can say for hopping, for jumping on the grass or even on any other plants. So grasshopper use their long hind legs for the motion and for jumping and hopping. So am I clear to you? So okay, moving to our next topic which is reptiles. How reptiles move, how their motion could be considered. So most of the reptiles have limbs. For example, lizards, crocodiles, turtles, they all have limbs. Limbs means to say this, this part is considered to be limbs. So they have limbs for the motion, but still they crawl on the ground. Still they crawl on the ground, even they have limbs because these are considered, is, that's why these are considered to be reptiles because they crawl on the ground. So reptiles, some of reptiles have limbs, but some of reptiles don't have limbs as you can say snake. Snake is also a species of reptile. So you can say there is a no forelimb or there is not a limb even 
for motion so snake just only crawl why why it don't have a limb because it is structurized like that or its figure is like that so what how it can move so its motion could be considered by these plates as you know snake is snake have more and more plates here you can see i have figurized there are more and more plates which help them for the motion and these plates are in the outward direction so that they can move uh, a motion on a rough surface also and these are considered on the on the ribs they are connected to the rib so that ribs can work as legs and their plates can be act as feet so these are the motion reptiles consist of now we are considering the birds so most of the birds can fly as you know pigeon parrot and many more bird that can fly how they fly because they have a powerful wings they have wings so that they can fly now the part is wings are connected to breast bones as they can provide up and down motion as they are connected to the breast bones so they can fly as they provide an up and down motion and some of the birds like ostrich kiwi ya fir emu they can fly why they can't fly because they are enough heavy or they have enough weight that their wings can't bear them or their wings you can say your their wings are not so strong so they can't fly so there is a example of kiwi emu and ostrich that can't fly and the birds who can fly are pigeon parrot and many more so let us revise a quick revise according to the chapter what we have done today we have done the motion in the animals or movement in the animals so for what they can be used body parts are used for the motion which help them for multitasking so first is to procure their food to get their food second is for moving one place to another place third to fight with their enemies or to protect themselves to defend themselves and fourth and last is to building their homes so we have considered discuss type uh, we have discussed in many types of insects reptiles birds and fishes so that how they could move how their uh, limbs used how their uh, wings are used to for the motion how their long hinges are used to and how their feet are used for motion and for many other things so in next lecture we will consider how human is sub superior for all these because humans can do a bit far better than these all species so in next lecture we will discuss how humans move how humans are being superior than these all species thank you stay safe stay home